Hi, this is Sean with OMU Energy. Through a series of tests, we're gonna show you the performance comparison between our Gen 3 Group 31 battery and Battleborn's BB112 Group 31 battery. Comparing the performance between the batteries is really important when you're making a decision about what battery to buy. The more amp hours you get out of a battery, the more you can do with it. And so that's the main metric that we'll be using to compare these two batteries. In many ways, they're spec'd similarly in terms of amps and charging profiles. So the important factor that really separates the two from each other is amp hours, which is the capacity of the battery. This will be a really good test for people to see because these are two similarly priced Group 31 kind of high performance lithium energy storage batteries that could be used in your RV or your boat or whatever application you may have. We'll be doing tests on each of these batteries at various temperatures. For the first test, we're gonna run them at ambient temperature. We're gonna do a charge just to top charge it and make sure that it's ready to go. Then we'll do a discharge, charge again, discharge again, and then charge again. We're gonna pull the two discharge cycles out of that and look at those two discharge total amp hours and record that. Then we're gonna average those and get one number for, for each battery for each test. And then that's the number we'll use to compare them. So the different temperatures that we're choosing to test at are ambient and then negative 20 degrees Celsius, which is negative four Fahrenheit. And then the last one will be at 60 degrees Celsius, which is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. We feel like these are good representations of kind of the two, the two more moderate extremes of use for, for these kind of batteries. And then, of course, neutral being, being ambient, what, what we should all expect to get uh, when we're, we're in our temperate climates. During the tests, we're going to run them the same on each battery. The test will be done at 40 amps. So that means both charge and discharge we're doing at 40 amps. And then the limits that we're going to use to define what's full and what's empty are going to be 14.7 at the top. So that's going to be full. We're, our system's going to cut off charging as soon as the battery touches 14.7 and then empty is gonna be 10.5. So we're gonna cut off all discharging as soon as we hit 10.5 volts. Uh, the system we're using to do the monitoring and testing is the West Mountain Radio, pretty common system among uh, enthusiasts of battery capacity. Uh, we're also gonna, we have a Thermotron environmental chamber, which is where we'll run, we'll run all the tests in the chamber, but we're only gonna run the, act, the chamber when we're doing the, the cold test or the, the hot test. Uh, otherwise, we're just, we'll just leave it off. So we're gonna start with the Battleborn battery and we're gonna start at ambient temperature. So we'll get it hooked up and then we'll show you the results as, as the test runs. We've got the battery all hooked up. We've got two sets of lines that we run from our testing stuff through, through the Thermotron and into the, to the battery terminals. Uh, one set is for charging, one set's for discharging. And simple as that, uh, we'll show you the settings we're gonna use in West Mountain Radio and start the test now so you can watch it go. All right, so here are the settings. We're gonna leave the top section is just kind of generic information about the battery that the system uses to try to define the test for you. So I'm just gonna leave some of that stuff alone. But uh, we're, we're gonna use the cutoff voltage, like I said, 10.5. Our maximum voltage will be 14.7. We're doing five cycles because we're starting with charge. So we'll do charge, then we'll discharge, then we'll charge, then we'll discharge, then we'll charge so that it ends with a full battery. And then we're doing our test amps at 40. So that's it, and then we'll, we'll see how it does. All right, test one is done for the Battleborn battery. Looks like our results were 102.7 and 102.2. So we'll throw that on the board. For Battleborn at ambient, 102.7, 102.2, which averages to 102.5 amp hours. 
Now we will swap the batteries out, we'll put the OMU in there and run the exact same test again. So we have wrapped up our ambient test with the OMU battery and we got 152.3 and 152.9. So we take the average of that at 152.6. So for ambient testing, we're at 152.6 amp hours OMU, 102.5 amp hours Battleborn. Next test is gonna be at negative 20 degrees Celsius and we're gonna start with Battleborn. We'll show you, uh, we'll show you frames of each of the tests running so you can see the graphs and how the data is coming through. All right, so we've wrapped up the Battleborn and OMU tests at negative 20 degrees Celsius, and the results are in for that. With Battleborn, we got the first cycle at 80.6 amp hours, and then the second cycle was 69.9 amp hours. We do expect that number to be less the second time because it's gotten more cold soaked internally in the battery itself. And the first test is only discharging after only being in the chamber for about two hours. And so that first test is cold, but it's more surface cold and not deep, deep, deep cold inside of the cells. The second test is gonna be done 10 hours after it goes in there. So it's, it's had time to really freeze the center of the cells. And so that is, that is to be expected that the second one be lower. Anyways, we got 80.6, 69.9, which comes out to 75.3 amp hours and averaging the two. And then with the OMU, uh, similar results in that the second is uh, lower than the first. We got 129.6 amp hours on the first run and 118.4 amp hours in the second run to average out at 124 amp hours. Uh, one of the keys to note is the, the percentage of decay that we experienced with the Battleborn battery. We uh, experienced about a 25% loss of energy capacity. And with the uh, OMU, we experienced only about a 20% loss of energy capacity. So they both lost energy capacity for sure in the cold as would be expected but given the same uh, parameters for, for charge and discharge, the OMU lost less by percentage. And of course, because it already starts out with a much greater capacity, even in the cold, you still get a much, much greater capacity than you would when the battle born even in perfect conditions. So now we will run the same tests again. First we'll do the battle born, then we'll do the OMU. And this time we're gonna be running them at 60 degrees Celsius, which is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've wrapped up our hot weather testing and the results are kind of interesting. The OMU battery did perform similarly to ambient, uh, kind of what we would expect. And it uh, again ended up with like 153 amp hours on average between these two cycles. But uh, the Battleborn was a little different. Um, the Battleborn did cycle once and produce about 102 amp hours. But uh, as it was heating up, uh, I suppose, the, it hit some kind of limit. And then the second, uh, the second cycle, it wasn't able to, to discharge at all. I mean, it discharged like 5, 10 amp hours and then, and then it just topped out. And then uh, we applied charge and it allowed a little bit in and then immediately it let the voltage soar and uh, so the system again cut off. So I think the, uh, the Battleborn EMS was, was restricting usage at this temperature, which is kind of interesting because I don't think 60 degrees Celsius is that hot realistically, uh, but that's because we, OMU, we're in uh, Arizona and we're in Phoenix, Arizona. So in, in, in the summertime here, we get to 110, 120 Fahrenheit. We know inside of our vehicles it could easily hit 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, that's what 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not really that hot. Seems like uh, not hot enough to to be kicking on thermal tripping like that. Um, but in any case, that was that was the result. So 
That's what we saw in the hot testing. OMU kind of similar to ambient, maybe just slightly more energy as we'd expect in heat. And then the, the Battleborn basically did not perform in, in the 60 degree Celsius test. All right, to sum it all up with uh, test data, we did the three different tests, ambient, cold, hot. At ambient, we 152 versus 102. OMU got 152 amp hours, uh, Battleborn at 102. In the colds, uh, OMU was at 124 amp hours, whereas Battleborn dropped down to 75 amp hours. The difference in those from ambient to cold, Battleborn lost about 27% of its capacity in the cold testing, and the OMU battery lost about 19% of its capacity in the cold testing. So they both lost capacity, um, but the Battleborn did lose significantly more capacity per uh, cold weather testing versus uh, the OMU, which is kind of to be expected with, that, with the extra capacity that, that the, the stresses of of thermal extremes is reduced, which is one of the great things about the OMU battery is all that extra capacity you're getting. And then in the heat, uh, the, the the test results were kind of, uh, did not perform for the Battleborn and uh, for the OMU, we got to slightly more capacity than, than in the ambient. Um, so that's what the, the data looks like and kind of how, how that would affect you and what how I, I feel you kind of should look at that is you're getting about, in most scenarios, you're getting at least 50 amp hours more usable capacity per each battery when you choose the OMU battery. Uh, 50 amp hours at 12.8 volts nominal is about 640 watt hours. In 640 watt hours, there's a lot of numbers, they may not, that may not mean a lot to most people, but uh, 640 watt hours can do a lot for you. Uh, that's like recharging your cell phone 50 times. That's uh, recharging a laptop from completely empty to full at least six times. Uh, running a TV, that's that's going to run a TV for for almost a full extra day. So you could be like 16 hours, depending on your TV and how big it is. Uh, most small LED-based TVs these days are pretty efficient, only burning like 20 watts while they're on. So you get you could get a whole extra day of continuous runtime on a TV per battery. Uh, things like a microwave, that's important uh, to, to consider. This is like 30 minutes more runtime on your microwave. So that could be like five, six frozen meals additionally on top of, uh, on top of the base uh, of what you would get with the Battleborn. By switching the OMU, you get, you get all that extra capacity. Of course, it's always a good idea to throw some solar, some way to generate some power throughout the day to help extend your, your trips as well. Um, so if you use, if you use the strategies of, of adding energy every day with some kind of renewable solar wind, something like that, and, uh, using batteries that have better capacity ratings, like the OMU battery, you're just going to have a much better experience and you're going to be able to go out longer and, uh, do what you want to do for a longer time without worrying about running out of juice. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, make sure to contact us. Uh, we are, of course, online at omu.com, and uh, you can always email us at support at omu.com and reach out. We'd love to hear from you and, and especially hear your thoughts on, on this comparison video.